What's going on guys? Welcome back to Praska Boys Garage and on this episode I'm doing another 110cc ATV build and uh, it, it's bad. Uh, <laughs> the last 110 build I did I said it was in the worst shape I've ever seen. Challenge was accepted and this one takes the cake so I will <laughs> I'll let the video speak for itself. I mean, this thing is just, <laughs> I don't know why I like it so much, man. It's definitely going to be something, something challenging. Oh, no, it's it's for sure going to be a lot of work. But just to make this one, if I can make this one work, you can, you can, you can do any, one. you can do any of them. You, you, there's nothing stopping. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've touched one of these things that didn't have some kind of frame damage of some kind. It's just such cheap metal that's used you know that. and the wiring's cheap it's all cheap the only nice thing that i like about them is that the motors are like they're honda replicas runs like a tank i don't, I don't understand uh, like i said the oil hasn't been changed in probably two years okay and so how, when did the fire start again like how long ago was the fire uh well, let me look at the post and i'll tell you because that day the day i posted it was like 30 minutes before oh the, d the day you posted the three-wheeler yep was the day that this one burned <laughs> yeah yeah like so it wasn't that long ago then no no it literally it just got on fire okay yeah. cool Well, there you have it. That is the new 110 build, and it is <laughs> it is as advertised when it comes to the shape of this thing. Now, we did have an agreed upon price of $50 before I drove down, and I got there. Full disclosure, he told me I didn't have to pay him anything for it, uh, but we had already agreed to 50 bucks, so I'm not gonna go back on that. I gave him the money, I loaded the thing up, and uh, we're headed home. I'm gonna get started on it as soon as I get there. I already started a parts list for it and ordered quite a few things. Well, because it just needs everything. <laughs> You'll see me get it unloaded. Let's get to work. All right, guys, well, it's pretty much torn down to where I like it. And I wanted to go over a couple things with you before the next time lapse. The first thing I want to talk about is what actually caused this thing to light on fire to begin with. Uh, what the gentleman told me is it was running and driving just fine, but he had noticed right here in the back of the frame that it had cracked, much like a lot of these ATVs that we've dealt with in the past. So he pulled it off the side, bu busted out his welder, and started welding the frame back together to get him back on the road. Well, there was gas still in the system, gas on the engine, and those sparks ignited the whole thing up in flames flames and hence why I got it in the condition that it is now. A lot of guys put these things together just to get them back on the road and we sometimes get ahead of ourselves and that's what happened here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing pressure washed off and just look over the entire thing for any fractures um, or breaks within the metal so I can get it all welded up at one time. Now there is only one real reason why I actually got this thing and it's actually going to be a profitable build for me. It's because I also found another gentleman on Facebook Marketplace selling parts off the identical ATV. His ATV said that he had broke the frame, scrapped the frame, and put the motor in another dirt bike but he kept every single component part to the ATV and sold it to me for another 50 bucks. So, so far I'm in it a whole hundred dollars and I'm gonna kind of put these two together. The good thing is he had a perfect body. He had all the suspension components and the rear end that we can put right on this ATV and make it whole again. So, I've got a lot of work ahead of me, but the next step on the time lapse, get this thing pressure washed and start looking to see if we can find all the cracks and breaks in the metal.
All right, now that it's all cleaned up, I did find quite a bit of welding I'm gonna have to do. Uh, on the top here, you can see the crack along, the gas tank support is cracked there and cracked here. So I'll get both of those cleaned up. The two main cracks that he was starting to work on when it started on fire, they didn't get lined up 100%. And if you can, if you can tell, this frame support is much lower than the back support. So ultimately what I think I'm going to do is cut right down the middle of the weld, get those two lined up so they're a lot closer, and then re-weld it on both sides. Now, that rear end, like I mentioned earlier, is complete trash. It's been cobbled together and re-welded a bunch of different times to keep it on the road. Well, it's uneven, the axle is sideways, and we have one to replace it. So we're just going to scrap this whole rear end and go with the one that came off my parts ATV. Now, the parts ATV didn't come off flawlessly. I don't know if it'll pick up on camera, but you can see right there, there is a crack in this as well. Uh, so I'll be hitting this with the welder before installing it onto the new ATV frame. Lastly, I did bring out the front suspension uh, for the ATV in case I do want to swap it over once we get that far. I don't know at this point. As of right now, I just want to address the welding before we break down these wheels and tires. All right, guys, the welding and back end is complete. Now, I am very happy with how this turned out. You can see here, it's a lot more even with where it's supposed to be, as well as the weld is filled all the way in and all the way around, as well as on top and the rear end. Now, the old rear end assembly that came with this ATV, it was all mangled and welded really weird uh, that caused it to pitch out quite a bit. So with the new rear end on, you can see looking straight on, it's looking pretty true. We'll still be able to adjust it once we get the chain on it, but for right now, very happy with how this thing is looking. Uh, so next up on my list, I'm gonna get these tires broke down off the rims on a time lapse, and then we're gonna go ahead and jump into this motor. All right, so update on the wheels. I went ahead and I've got two pretty much done. Uh, they're completely stripped of all the old orange paint and the factory powder coat that's on them. Uh, this one here, that one there, they're sitting in paint remover now between my blast cabinet and a wire brush. I'm trying to get those things cleaned off, so I'm not gonna film any more of that. I'm gonna turn my attention now to the motor. This thing came in completely filthy, uh, mostly from the fire, also from overspray from the spray paint. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this burnt up carburetor off, I'm gonna plug this intake hole, I'm gonna run it over the pressure washer, get it pressure washed off before I start working. All right, now that it's all cleaned off, I'm gonna go ahead and check a couple things. Because there was a fire, um, I wasn't sure what kind of shape this starter was gonna be in, so I went ahead and I ordered a brand new one. In the meantime, we're still gonna check to see if this one functions. Uh, at least I'm gonna have to replace this wire. I don't know if that'll pick up that far away on camera, but it did, it did catch that on fire just a little bit and melt the casing. Also, we're gonna check for compression. 
and ultimately change the oil and get this thing ready to put back on the ATV. So the first things first, let's see what kind of oil we're in. Now he did mention that it has not been changed in about two years. That shows up on camera. It's not the best, but it's not terrible. I've seen worse. At least there's no water or anything else that looks like it's been in it. So before I change that oil, let's just check the status of this starter and compression. All right, here we go. That sounds good. Let's take the spark plug out. Uh, it's pretty crusty. I'd say that one probably has been a couple years since that's been changed. When our new wiring harness will get here, uh, that will have a new spark plug with it. So we'll change that at that time. Let's hear it run without it. Okay, <laughs> that's got some good compression. Let's put a reading on it, see what we got. Now he did say that before the fire happened, it was running great, didn't have any issues with the motor at all. Uh, it was mostly just the frame and obviously the welding and the catching on fire, that was the issue. But he said it ran, ran really good. So let's get this checked out and see where we are compression wise. All right, ready? Woo! <laughs> That's like 160. That might be the best I've ever seen it on a used uh, used motor like this. Here we go. Let's do it one more time just to double check. Yeah, dang. That's 160. Holy cow. Well, um, I think it's safe to say that we've got a good motor. And the next thing I want to do is just change this oil so it's ready to go back in the ATV. Now, before this motor can actually go in the ATV, there's a few things that we need to address. The first thing is this front suspension itself. Now, these front shocks are pretty rough shape. Um, as you can see, I'm gonna put some torque on it and they've got no travel at all. It's completely locked up. If I take you over to the other side and do the same thing, it's got a little bit of movement but not much. I got to give it, you know, the good old what for. So since we do have that parts ATV, I'm going to use those shocks and get those put on. That way we've got some more travel and everything lines up correctly. Also under the inspection, these hubs are disgusting. I'm going to get them cleaned up. They also don't turn the greatest. So we're going to pop those off, investigate what's going on in there, make sure it's all clean and ready to go. Lastly, in this time lapse, I did get the wheels finished up and actually put on a chassis saver black. I want to go ahead and take a sandpaper, scuff these up. That way they're ready for the new paint. I can mount the new stems in, put the tires back on, get them back on the ATV, make this thing a fully rolling chassis ready for this motor. All right, so here's where we're at. These rims turned out amazing, and they're on their second coat now, and they're just drying. I'm gonna let those dry overnight, but I am very impressed, very, very happy with the color and how those are turning out. They're gonna look badass when the tires are back on. As far as the rest of the stuff is concerned, the shocks are on relatively easy, no issues there. The hubs, now here's one thing for you guys. They took these castle nuts and they tighten them all the way down super tight. And that's what was causing that friction for them to spin. Now the brake pads actually in good shape on both sides. So all I did was I stripped that rust off. I put them in the chassis saver. Those are drying. Those will go back on tomorrow. Now I'm kind of at a standstill for everything else. As far as the gas tank is concerned, this is from our parts ATV. I did notice it has been kind of JB welded glued. I didn't notice that before. I'm gonna get a new one of these ordered and have that on the way. Uh, but I did notice on the frame that the tab for it has broke off. So I'm gonna pick up tomorrow. I'm gonna bust the welder back out. I'm gonna address 
that gas tank getting it mocked up. I think I'm going to fill and grind out this hole. That way that hole is covered and then start addressing a few of the other things. So that's it for me tonight and I'll pick you up on the camera tomorrow. All right, so it's the next morning in the shop and I'm starting to mock up the gas tank. And what I did was I loosely flitted on the plastics on top. I got them kind of bolted down all the way around, got the seat locked in. That way I can see where this gas tank actually needs to fit. And uh, here's what I found out. If you can see, that bracket that broke off is actually sitting right behind that cross piece there. But with the top flush mounted, that gas tank ends right here. However, there's about three inches between the crossbar to there. So I need to find some flat stock that I could weld here and also make bend to line up with this gas tank. That way we don't have it shuffling around the whole time. So that is my next goal is to p fabricate some kind of piece of metal from there to there. That way this gas tank is secure. All right, guys, well, the gas tank is checked off the list. It wasn't too bad. Uh, the weld turned out pretty decent on this side. Uh, it's pretty sturdy. And then on this side, turned out pretty crappy only because halfway through I realized I turned my gas off and didn't have it on when I was welding. So not the prettiest thing, but no one's ever gonna see it. So we're gonna go ahead and hit all the weld spots uh, throughout the entire ATV, including this front hole that I just filled in with some black spray paint, maybe some flat black just to kind of go with the color of the frame. Uh, that way that we don't have any rust problems down the road. Now the hubs and the wheels themselves are still drying. Uh, I only sprayed them about six or seven hours ago. So I want a little bit more time for those to set up before I start manhandling them onto this ATV. So the next thing on the list was the exhaust itself. It's filthy, it's covered in rust, they all are, they're all bad. So I'm gonna take that wire brush on the grinder, clean all this off and get this thing painted. All right, so now that the exhaust is done being stripped and completely painted, we're gonna let that set up and dry. Everything else is still kind of tacky, and uh, I wanted to have a good amount of time before we put this rolling chassis together. That's all right though, we've got a ton of work left, including this body. Now it came in this camo type paint. Uh, I'm not a fan of it at all, so we're gonna go ahead and strip all the decals and the paint off this thing to begin with, get it prepped and ready for the new paint job. All right, well, I'm gonna to continue to work on the body. I think you guys get the idea. I'm gonna strip this thing down so it's completely perfect. Uh, and we're gonna end up bedlining underneath and priming this top. I'll pick you guys back up on the body when I get to that stage. In the meantime, uh, but for right now, I really just wanna get these wheels put back together. So I'm gonna do that.
All right, guys. Well, I just could not help myself. I wanted to get this thing back to a full rolling chassis and the wheels took a little bit of suffering for it. Now, I did end up chipping them a little bit and scratch them along the way, but let's be honest, it's a kid's ATV. Whoever gets this is gonna completely destroy it anyway, so our goal is to just make it look better than it did when it came in the shop, and I feel that we've done that. Now, I did get the motor put back in with the exhaust. If you notice on the first time lapse, I could not get the exhaust out without taking the motor out first. So when I assembled it back together, I reversed the order, I put the exhaust in first, then mounted the motor. So that's all in and secure. I'm still waiting on new studs for the exhaust to come in. So right now it's just temporarily set up. Uh, we will get that handled once those come in. Now, as far as my parts, I've got, a, I've got my air filter and carburetor and new fuel tank. I'm gonna get all those mounted up before we go ahead and start completing the wiring process. All right, like always, make sure the key is on. We're gonna act as if we're pulling that brake handle by putting those two together. Hit the go button one last time. And we're all set. All right, now I wanted to give you guys a quick update with where we are on this ATV. I went ahead and did a complete how-to wiring video on wiring one of these Chinese ATVs. The link to that will be in the description down below. So if you have any questions on how to wire one of these ATVs, please look to that as a reference guide. I go through all the steps it takes to put one of these things together. Now, as far as this ATV is concerned, I did also throw on a brand new starter with all that new wiring. It did fire over in that video. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and fill the gas tank up for the first time and see if we can't get this thing to idle. Key is on. We're going to act as if we're pulling the brake handle by pulling these two wires together. And let's see if we can get it to crank over. Try with the choke on. Woo! Now we don't have a throttle. So I can't throttle up or throttle down, but it is. All right, well, now that we know it's running right, uh, we can finish up some of the small things before we get ready to put this body back on. Uh, a few things we're going to do. The new brake, rear brake is in, so we're going to get that put on, put the chain back on, and then also the new exhaust studs are in. So we're going to go ahead and put all that stuff on, get it ready for this body. All right, next up is the body itself. Now, I didn't get it 100% stripped perfect like I usually do for paint, because this time we're gonna truck bed the entire body, both underneath and on top, before we hit it with the paint. I'm not gonna lie, I think I might instantly regret this decision. I actually really like this look of the bed liner, but I said I was gonna do orange, gotta make it orange.
All right, guys, the brakes are done. The rear chain is done. We can check that stuff off the list. Now, moving on, I put the body on for this next mock-up. I have the brake light. Now, it's a brand new brake light. The old one, this back piece had at some point broken or snapped off. I cut the frame straight. That way, it's a clean piece right there. And what I plan to do is take these three and a half inch by half inch bolts, and I'm going to weld them right on just like this. And with that, in between both bolts, I'm gonna take this flat stock steel, so it's gonna run a bar straight across, ultimately ended up mounting this brake light right where it's supposed to be. So, gotta weld those two on, cut that up, let's get this thing mounted. All right, that's a wrap for the rear brake light. Now, I understand some of you may be thinking that's probably a little excessive. I wouldn't disagree, but here's the thing. It might have cost $3 in hardware, and it looks actually pretty badass. So I'm very happy with how it turned out. Um, as you can see, reinforced, reinforced on both sides, that bar running straight across, that thing is mounted in and functioning as it should. Lights are on, and when I touch the brake handle together, it goes brighter. Man, that looks awesome. So now that that's checked off the list, the last thing I need to do before I can complete this build and put the body and all the plastics back on is finish up all the controls on the top side. All right, now here's what's going on with the front controls. I went ahead and ordered two brand new front brake cables. I ordered the throttle cable itself and of course the housing for the throttle lever and the brake lever. Also, I did order my traditional fly grips. If you've watched my other videos, I put these on everything I build. They are my absolute favorite to use. I highly recommend them. Now off camera, I did go ahead and set up the carburetor. The cable I ordered didn't have enough travel for the sleeve. So what I did was I cut the casing, I readjusted the throttle cable itself and went ahead and made sure there was a perfect amount of slack for when we put it on the ATV. Now, I'm going to get everything mounted up on the handlebars itself right now. Uh, just that way we get everything adjusted, zip tight if we need to, and in order, I'm going to go ahead and then take everything off the handlebars, put the body on, and put the handlebars back together. It seems like a lot of work and it seems kind of redundant, but I want to go ahead and make sure everything fits perfectly and the body's not in my way while I'm doing it. So here's the time lapse of me getting all this put on the ATV. All right, guys, that's it for the front controls. Everything is in exactly where I want it and works as it should. I did put a quick disconnect in for that front brake indicator. Uh, that way, in case we ever have to replace in the future, we can quickly disconnect and it's not hardwired in. Now, moving forward, after all this is done, we can finally move on to final assembly with this body. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the parts that I got from my parts ATV. I did order two brand new LED headlights that have low and high beams. We're gonna get those put in, get that put on the body. And then everything you see here, let's get it back on, finish this thing up and get somebody riding it.
All right, guys, well, that's gonna be it for me on this build. I've done everything that I wanted to do, bringing it back from the flames of death uh, up to a fully functioning running ATV. Now, some of the stuff that you guys have seen me do in my other videos, I didn't do on this one, and I did that for a very specific reason, and it is because where this ATV is actually going. What I did was I bought it from a family that had a young boy that actually was very upset when it was lit on fire that he lost his ATV. And after hearing that story, I'm actually going to be giving it back to the family. I've contacted the mom and dad, I've let them know my plans, uh, but their son, Wyatt, has no idea what we have in store. So I wanted to leave a few things on the ATV that would help him remember that it's still the same one, even though it's quite a bit different. That's why we went with the orange wheels and the orange paint. That's the color they had requested. I hope they like it. You guys have been great to my channel. Like this video, subscribe. I've got a lot of future content ready to go and I can't wait to share it with you guys. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you on the next one. All right guys, it is sunrise the next morning and we are on our way to Keokuk, Iowa. It's about a three hour drive from where I live. Let's go ahead and get this ATV delivered. Good morning, Wyatt. You wanna come take a look? What do you think, Wyatt? That's this. That's your ATV. Yeah, yes. Do you like it? Should we get it down? Yeah. All right, let's get it down. <laughs> you want to start it? <laughs> this is your ATV. Yeah. He's got an orange shirt on. You match your new four-wheeler, dude. How about you take me for a ride? Um, yeah. Yeah? Let me go slow. You go slow? Good. Daddy gets scared. <laughs> I'm jumping. Come on, Dad. No, we're not jumping. <laughs> he wanted to jump over that. Like, no. <laughs> he wants to build some, <laughs> build some ramps already. You're yeah. a brave man. You give him knuckles. <laughs> there it is.